to the bodies of children who don't have enough health care or food or safety, to the bodies of women. Nicholas Kristof and Cheryl Wudan have written a book called Half the Sky, detailing the immense amounts of horror and oppression done to the women of the world, especially in developing nations, but not just there. If we think the body is sacred, if we really thought the body mattered, would we do so much damage to it as we do? Would money be so much more important? I've been exercised for the last two days about a vote in the U.S. Senate. Al Franken, the new junior senator from Minnesota, introduced an amendment saying that we should not hire contractors for the Department of Defense that force employees to sign away their civil rights. This happened in the case of a woman named Jamie Lee Curtis, who was sexually assaulted by other members of the same company she worked for in Iraq. That would be Halliburton. And when she tried to sue the company for not protecting her, she said, no, you can't sue us. You signed a contract in which you gave up your right to sue us and had to submit to arbitration. Well, so Mr. Franken said, we should, we should not allow the government to take part in allowing people to give up their own civil rights. And it passed, thank you, 68 to 30. But let's remember, 30 senators said corporate freedom is more important than civil rights. 30 senators said rape is okay if you sign your rights away. A culture that values bodies would not be able to say that. A culture, a culture that valued children would not argue about health insurance. You see what I'm saying? The spirituality of the body is real. And when we think it's just over there in Washington or just in the corporate world, it's because our bodies are being diminished. And I'm asking you as spiritual beings to remember what it was to be a child, how you ran and jumped and felt pain and enjoyed all the games and how you learned from that. And that sometimes maybe children are teaching us what really, really matters. We need to remember incarnation as a vital spiritual practice to embody our spirits, to cherish our bodies, to love them and to love the bodies of others. We need to make the body holy again, spiritual and powerful. And that means everything we get from it, food, you're gonna eat quiche, love the quiche. I hope you love it a lot. We're going to eat Indian food, and I had some last night and forgot to bring it out here to show you. Ooh, the naan bread is just magnificent. Come eat it. Be nourished by it. But there are other ways. Art prize. We sell beautiful things, and as we just heard, we heard beautiful things. Now I'll put in a plug for the Grand Rapids Opera, who's mounting a production of Cosi Fantuti this weekend. And I'm going to go. I was going to go Friday, but I want to eat Indian foods. I'm going to go on Saturday instead. So when I preach next week, I'll be a little sleep deprived, but very happy. And I'll be very happy because of one piece in particular, a piece I want you to share a little bit of, because I want to tell you that music is a body experience. It's not an intellectual experience. It's a bodily experience. In it, two young ladies are bidding farewell to their lovers who are going off to war in a deception. Gentle go winds, send them forth upon the ocean. It's not intellectual, it's in your gut. Oh, a spirituality of the body loves beauty that nourishes the body as much as any meal 
that slakes the thirst as much as any drink. Oh, how beautiful it is. And what's more, when we hear music like that, we know that there are bodies making it. The singers, the orchestra, they're taking their bodies and creating something beautiful. So the next thing I want to tell you is not just about incarnation. I'm going to get all Roman Catholic on you. We are about transubstantiation, too, to transform our bodies into beauty, transform our bodies into justice, transform our bodies into holiness by acts of kindness and mercy, ma'asim tovim, good deeds, tzedakah, as it's called. Our job is to transform as well as incarnate to create new, wonderful things, new children, new music, new books, new hopes, new ideas, new thoughts, new products, new foods to enrich everyone. We are here to incarnate and transubstantiate the world with our bodies. And at the end of our lives, if we are lucky, we can hand it all over, our bodies, our souls, and we can think of something almost unthinkable here, resurrection. Not of your body out of the grave, no, but in the sense of planting back in the earth the seed that you once were and trusting that what you lived, what you made, what you did will be a seed from which other lives will grow. If the spiritual task of youth is to receive the gift of life and incarnate it, if the spiritual challenge of adulthood is to learn and use that gift to create new things, the spiritual challenge of age is to relinquish it back to the earth so that it can grow again in ways we cannot even imagine. Incarnation transubstantiation, resurrection. This is the theology of the body for everyone. Treasure your body because it is part of your soul. I sing the body electric, says Walt Whitman, the exquisite realization of health. Oh, I say these are not parts and poems of the body only, but of the soul. These are the soul, says Whitman. Yes, our limbs are the soul. When we incarnate them, our souls get larger. We transubstantiate them by the work of our hands and the work of our hearts. As Moses Maimonides observed, the well-being of the soul can only be obtained after that of the body has been secured. We are married soul and body. And at the end, at the end, at the end, we should be ready to hand it back to the earth, knowing that whatever seeds we grew will fall on ground and grow again in ways we will not see. But behold, we live in a building built by those who do not know us. They built it and do not live, and yet we are here to harvest the beauty of their faith. Behold, our children our grandchildren will see a world we do not know. Oh, we may wish we could, but we can believe in it. We can believe in it so much that we are willing to give our lives to make it possible to die and resurrect in their hope. Treasure your body, friends. Create beautiful and good and worthy things and bestow it at the end on a future you will not meet a seed for tomorrow, a tomorrow we cannot see or know, but without which the future cannot grow or even hope to grow. Have faith, friends, faith in your bodies. They are sacred things. And let us all say, amen.